welcome to today's build. And today we're going to build a coat rack type thing out of some pallet wood. Right now I'm denailing everything. Won't bring you in for that, but I'm going to denail it. I'm going to smooth it all out. I don't have a, a planer or anything, so I'm just going to sand the crap out of it. Then we'll figure out what pieces we have and maybe what we can build. Some sort of coat rack for the entryway. So we'll do some narration here. What I'm doing is I'm setting everything to two and a half inches on the table saw. Getting them all down to that nice two and a half inches. They all had a really nice side on it so I wasn't too worried about being straight or anything. Everything just kind of worked out. Uh, once I had them all cut down I decided to uh, um, cut them all down to length. I think I did 31 inches. Cut them all down just basically kind of a, a general idea of where I was going to be with that. Uh, then I went ahead and made some marks so I could do my biscuit joiner. beer break. I don't use my biscuit joiner a lot but I figured I'd try it here. They seem to work pretty good. You just got to make sure they're level. Um, I only used O. I don't know what that means but they're pretty small. Cutting all the biscuit joints. Uh, pretty easy. Then what you do is you just put a bunch of glue on it and then you wedge them together. did there cut them down to all about two and a half inches they all had a pretty good edge so I didn't have to do much I took the biscuit joiner biscuited everything now I'm gonna paste them all together that's gonna give us the back of our coat rack there'll be sides on it with a little bit of a, a hangover as well but we're just gonna get this part done kind of go from there. So now he's got to add glue. I got to get my clamps ready. We'll clamp them all down and uh, glue it up. And when that's all dry, then we can take the sander and we'll do a bunch more sanding. All right, so I'm applying a liberal amount of glue onto these sides biscuit joining them in, rubbing them in with the uh, paintbrush there. Uh, I have a bunch of the like half inch um, felt or whatever paintbrushes. They're, they're pretty cheap. I burn them when I'm done. They're super easy to use, really cheap. And just kind of spreads your glue out, gets everything going. What you want to do is you want to make sure you clamp it really good. So I clamped everything really good. Banged everything in. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make fun of this guy. You ever realize how big his nose is? It's gross. Big old nose on this, on this guy. Oh, look at him trying to clamp stuff. Can't even do it right. Should have moved your table saw, bud, huh? He's doing stuff on the table saw. Glue's all over his table saw. He's getting it all dirty. What a dummy. This is insane. He's a lot of clamps, though. All right, so I got an abundance of clamps on there. I should have moved it off my table saw, but I'll clean that now. Put some little ones on the side just to hold everything flat and then really clamped everything down with a lot of force. We're just gonna let that dry. That'll just sit and dry for a while. And I'll think about what else we're gonna do to it. All right, we got these other pieces of pallet wood. 
I'll sand it up off that same same board. This is just pallet wood. Look how nice that is. Uh, did it with a belt sander with 80. Really got into it. And then I went up from there to uh, 150. It's nice and smooth. What I'm going to do now, this will be the top that will sit on the um, the key rack or coat rack, whatever this is going to be. This will be the top for it, and then we're going to have some sides that come down. The short little ones that come down on the side. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to burnish it. I still have some cutting to do and routing to make everything good, but I want to burn it and, and see how that goes. Alright, so this big dummy doesn't know that. Your propane needs to be a little bit hot in order for it to work. Look, at it keeps going out. Just watch it. It looks good, huh? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Look, ah, it went out. Burned out. Now he's trying to burn it in front of the... <laughs> oh, what a dummy. Oh, it's so slow. Yeah, it looks cool, though, huh? At least he knows to hold it up right now. Maybe he'll burn his hand, I don't know. Let him go. Just getting after it. Really trying to impress you guys. Maybe it'll look cool in the end, I don't know. Look at his big nose sitting there. Ridiculous. All right. So I went ahead and I burnished them. Sanded it off with some nice 220 grit. They look really nice. They'll look really good when we get some poly on there. Now we just gotta wait till our glue's dry. I can cut that down the side, then we can start cutting these down the side, getting some routing on there. Yeah, it's come together. I'm gonna burnish that once I scrape the glue off and sand it down. The, the back wall part. Try to let that sit a little bit more and then go from there. Alright, I just went ahead and started some things here. I figured a whole shelf would be 31 inches long anyway because I got to cut some off that. So I cut this down to 31. I rounded the corners, burned everything, did some more sanding. Need a little bit more. Everything's nice and smooth not pokey anymore. I cut these down. And how these are going to sit is right up here. I'm going to cut them back. You can see it's there. I'm going to cut them back. And then there'll be an angle on them as well. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to kind of figure that out. Figure out how I want it. what happens now you can see this big dummy trying to measure stuff but what he doesn't realize is when he cuts it like that it's gonna stick out the side look at that oh he screwed up but he's gonna fix it anyway as he goes because he doesn't really care it's just gonna happen so he's going to cut them down to two inches on the side. He's going to use his uh, laser guided um, crappy chop saw there. And he didn't cut his fingers off. Now he's going to kind of take some of the crap off of it. Use his router that he got. Itch his nose a bunch. Looks pretty cool. It's working out, but he did screw up. We'll see how he fixes this mistake. I don't know if you know it yet. Now he's burning it, getting the edges. See what he does. And now he's got a, I think he figured out his mistake already. Yep, yep, so he's putting it right at the edge there. Yep, instead of going on the outside, he's going on the end, so it's gonna be a little bit shorter than he thought. Now he's doing some measuring. Trying to figure out, he burns everything. Look at that, he's even got a tabletop burn. Huh. All right, 
right, so now what I'm going to do, I got this all mocked up. We'll have to cut that piece drying in front of the fire. Right there, we'll have to dry that uh, for a little while. But what I'm going to do here, so I got the top done. The sides are going to go on. What I'll do is I'll just pocket hole these in. And then we're just going to do a bunch of wipe on poly. And then whenever I get that completed, that'll slide right up in here. We'll glue it in. And we'll just put some nice brand nails around the outside to hold everything. The glue will dry nice and strong. It'll be good. So I'll wait till we get it in to poly it. But that's our next step here. All right. We got the board dry. Now we are just going to sand that ever loving hiss out of this. Let's see what happens. I don't, you know, you're going to use 80. Just make it smooth. It does, it's not like a desktop to be right on, but we're going to sand. Find the side, we're going to sand it real good. Both sides and sand it real good on, on the side that's going to be facing everyone. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Now you guys are just going to watch this dude sand a bunch of stuff. I'll drink a beer for you. So what he's got on there is some 80 grit sandpaper on a $40 belt sander from Walmart. Look at that. It works. It's all pallet wood. Make it look nice. You know, let's just scrape it a little bit. Now, this dude does not have the proper tools to do anything. He just kind of gets after it and tries stuff. Lots of air compressor work there, huh? Yeah. Really making it smooth. Well, now it's going to get different grits. Might work out for him. I don't know. I don't know about this guy. Look at that. Look how nice it looks. He's getting there. Maybe he'll figure it out, huh? All right, so we got this part done. It's all sanded up to 220. The back is just kind of sanded because it's the back. Now what I want to do is I want to burnish the whole thing, but I want to make it like light, dark, light, dark, kind of like a flaggish kind of pattern. So what I'll do is I'll burn the whole thing and then I'll try to burn this one and this one a little bit darker and then I can sand around and we'll go from there. Alright, you guys are lucky that I edit this dude's videos. Jeez. You cut a lot out. Looks like he's trying to burn. This is a long video, so now he's going to burn less. Oh, now he's trying to trying to add a hinge so he can burn without screwing it up. It's burning. Burn, burning everything. It is not working. Let's figure it out, guy. Okay? Trying to give it with that real offset pattern just isn't working for him. Now what I think we're going to do, we're going to tape it off and we're going to use some excess stain. Probably. I am this guy, so I know what I'm doing. Except for we're both not sober. So I'm going to make fun of him. Look at him. Taping it off. Get some excess stain ready. Paint it on there. Looking pretty neat. Yeah, that'll work, huh? Huh? Alright, beers are getting all dusty. So we went ahead, I 
did like how it was turning out the just wasn't giving me that offset that I needed, so I had some old stain. The only reason I had that stain was because I want to get some more later, and I had just enough to scrape the bottom and get it on this piece here. I taped it off so it's nice and burned. I taped it off, put that stain on. I'm going to wipe it off, let it dry. And then I should have nice contrasting colors with good lines. And then we'll go ahead and put it on. I was trying to use this to not burn the white part, but that didn't work. But we'll go ahead and let this sit for a second. I'll wipe it off and then we'll let it dry. All right, now it's glue time. Yeah, we have a nailer here. So we don't need those clamps. Just quit with the clamps. I'm trying to show you all special clamps here. Dummy. Just nail them in. There you go. Who needs clamps when you got brad nails? Glue takes care of everything. Works out. Yeah, I would not not use clamps again if I were this guy. Yeah, look at that. Didn't even need a clamp on the other side. Looks good. All right, so that turned out a lot better than I thought it would. In. So, we got these on, they're just glued in, and a couple brad nails in the top, goes over the top, nice and offset, that worked out really well. So now what we're going to do, we're going to strap every, we're going to put some glue around the corners, we're going to strap everything down and brad nail it. And how we're going to end up hanging this is on the back side we're going to do a French pleat. I'm just going to put one strip here. Just something to press against the wall, same thickness as the French pleat. And then the French pleat up here. And then the extra one um, will just go with parts. And then when he hangs it on his wall, he can just hang that French cleat wherever he wants, and then this will stick right to it. Okay. I hope everyone can pick out this guy's mistake. He's got enough glue. Looks really good. But as he puts it on, it's all level. Look how nice it is. Now he's going to add French cleats. You can pick out what he's doing wrong. We'll tell you at the end. Nailing everything on, getting everything good so he doesn't hurt his fingers because I am this guy and I don't want to hurt my fingers even when I'm drunk. Uh, I did run out of nails there, so those didn't really work. So I had to put more in later. But yeah, I'm out of nails all, all through this. I think I only had a couple left. But we're getting it in there, we're sanding, making it look neat. All right, we gotta make sure we drink beer for this next part. You guys are about to watch me screw up the entire project. Because I'm really hurrying here. What I wanna do is I wanna add where you hang your clothes and stuff. And I'm gonna use this half inch metal pipe, I'll paint it black. But I need to put it in there on a 45 so you can hang stuff and we'll just do Quick four hangers, nice and sturdy. Yeah, I'll let you guys watch it. At least the first one without time lapse. See what happens here, boys. I'll probably measure out how far I want it out. Oh, jeepers. Now 
probably not drilling on my table, huh? fun watching these videos after the fact. This was extremely dangerous. I could have screwed the whole project up if the bit slipped, but I, I had the metal tube around and I just used my square and it worked out, carving out the uh, holes there, sanding everything down. It just worked out. I'm glad I flipped it around to have the darker on the top because when I sanded it, it would have screwed it up. Now I'm going to cut these down just using the angle grinder, cutting them down. Just some random scrap metal I had, other projects and whatnot. Beer drink time. That looks like he's just grinding everything. Yeah, he did hit his finger there pretty hard. All right, I got those cut sand. down. Kind of rushing through this. I don't want to wait for paint. I'm out here, we're doing it. I got this multicolored, textured, works on metal, wood, and more, rich, elegant, stops rust, all that. So that's what I'm going to paint these with. It'll be a nice offset with the brown. Maybe, I don't know, I don't know, paint. That's what we're gonna do. They're down to four inches. We're gonna paint them, let them dry, and then we'll use some really nice hard epoxy I got. And that's what'll hold it in, hopefully. All right, well, I'll tell you what's going on. He won't. Now we're just jumping right into cutting these French cleats. So his table saw is half broken, so he had to fix it real quick put everything back together so you can crank it and then he's got to crank it to 45 degrees set everything up plug it back in because he's a dummy cut the 45 degree angle and he's gonna bring it back and he's gonna glue it on nice and level levels everything out lots of glue because that's the only thing on this project there's no like real positive joints in this it's all glue and then nails nails don't they don't do much and they do a little bit but not a lot i don't really need screws you glue a nail and then you uh screw later but we didn't use any screws in this project at all not one basically nail it in cutting off some of the excess because it came through yeah looks good look you got it now he's going to put another piece on so as you can see now we're going to stick out the back. That's where we screwed up. We didn't recess the back part. All right, this nonsense is working out left and right here. Look at this. We got the French cleat. This will go onto his wall like that, and then this will hang on it. French cleat right up in there. This is a backer, a spacer. Look at that. We got my holes here. This fits perfectly there, so I can even drill those holes deeper and sink those just a little bit more in. Look at that. Just things work out when you don't try. Ridiculous. Alright, so I'm just going to glue this on there. Yeah, working out. Alright, now we're polling everything. Make sure we got all the dust off, everything. Get the table ready gloves on. We are going to poly the crap out of this thing. 
let it dry a little bit and then keep going. Just lots of lots of the wipe on poly. We don't need much um, protection, just the poly. We could do lacquer. Uh, I just don't have any at this moment, so we did poly. Really brings out the color, brings out everything. I will have to buy some um, spray on lacquer at some point. I like having it around. It's a good thing to have in your shop. You should always have that in your shop. I'm sitting there, take the gloves off. All right, so as you can see, I got the poly on. Looks real nice and shiny. I got a coat. I let it dry for about a half hour. And then I put another coat on. It's supposed to be longer, but I held it in front of the burner. I don't know. Looked really nice. Those things are drying there. My beer froze, so I could thaw them out. Those pins are going here, giving the coat hangers. Yeah, just let this dry and. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these rods in and then bring everything in to dry. It's like negative 20 degrees out right now, so the shop will get negative 20 in a couple hours once everything burns out. So what we're going to do is I got this, and it's got an applicator that mixes everything. We'll push it into these holes and glue it all in. We are on the home stretch of this project at we didn't even know how this was going to turn out. Adding a bunch of glue, making it work out. We're going to bring it in. It's going to look so cool. Look at him jump around all nimbly bimbly. Like a cat. Oh, that actually looks pretty neat. This drunk guy did good. Just kidding. Other people can do better. There's a lot of mistakes in this video. Should pick them out. Tell them what's up. And there we have it. We have a nice coat rack. The inside for coats. We have a bunch of little tiny hangers here for all the keys all over the place. You can put stuff up on top. And that's it. Got a nice coat rack. We'll see you at the next project. Thanks for coming.